The Iowa Hawkeyes landing somebody in the transfer portal. Yes, the window closing does not mean Iowa can't continue to do work and work they have done this week. And we'll talk about Rusty Feff and also potential for another commit coming out of this weekend. We'll talk about that in a second as well. But first of all, I want to remind you to check out Iowa floor covering and their tough core click together 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. It's available at a really low rate, 269 per foot with self-installation. Visit iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. Tyler, the guys down there cannot express how much I appreciate how much they've supported the show. So I ask you as the viewer, as the listener, as the supporter of this show to support Iowa floor covering. And of course, Ascent Nutrition, Lance Shuttler, again, talk about the support of our sponsors. He's been with us for so long and he's a former Iowa graduate. He's got this algae oil DHA, Ascent Nutrition doing great stuff with health products and this algae oil DHA, so many great benefits to read more and place your order. Visit goascentnutrition.com and use that code Hawkeyes for 15% off your order. Again, that's goascentnutrition.com. Whether we're talking the algae oil DHA, their pine pollen powder, or even their premium organic coffee. Again, that's goascentnutrition.com. So the Hawkeyes getting great news on a Sunday. Miami, Ohio grad transfer interior offensive lineman Rusty Fifth, a guy who has one year of eligibility remaining, will use that year of eligibility in Iowa City. The Ohio native, a guy who actually played under George Barnett when Barnett was back at Miami, uh, visited this weekend along with Virginia linebacker, uh, along with Virginia linebacker Nick Jackson, who's in the transfer portal. We'll talk about him in a moment. But Feth wasted no time, announced his commitment on Twitter on this Sunday, and he will join the fray. Big get for Iowa. We know they missed on Walter Rouse. He was a big fish from Stanford. I've been told on really good authority. You probably heard Brad Heinrichs even talk about that openly on uh, this show during Hawkeye Hangout last week, that Walter Rouse, a large pull for Rouse, was NIL. I'm guessing Rusty Feth maybe had some NIL opportunities, but it was by far not the biggest pull here. And he's got an opportunity. If he has a good year at Iowa, perhaps uh, he can find a spot in the league. Don't know if he would have been able to do that being a second team all-conference guy in the MAC. And I mean, look, there's no question about it. He's going to have an opportunity to develop. Again, he'll get in the strength room. He doesn't get here until the summer, but he'll get in that strength conditioning program. He's already listed around 300, 305. And then we're talking fall camp, the season, bowl prep. He's going to have an opportunity to get even better uh, heading into the NFL draft. And a lot of these guys who are in the portal, uh, that's what they're looking for. Some of these guys are graduates. They're looking for a fourth, fifth, or even a sixth year at times uh, to increase their draft stock. I would have to think a guy like Rusty Feth is more concerned with that than maybe making a quick buck. Purdue offered Rusty. West Virginia offered Rusty Feth. Virginia also offered Uh, So he had opportunities to go other places. He hadn't been in the portal all that long. What a week, maybe two. Iowa got in on him, got the visit scheduled, and uh, they were able to convince him to pull the trigger sooner rather than later. And keep in mind, the portal window did already close. But one thing you need to remember is as a graduate transfer, you can enter the portal whenever. And Charlie Jones did that last year, entered the portal in June. I know a lot of people didn't appreciate the timing of all that. But that's the freedom you have as a graduate. Now, keep in mind, Rusty Feth has not yet graduated. He's on pace to graduate, I believe, in May, which means he could get here in June. But he'll not be enrolled. He is not enrolled at Iowa this semester, will not be able to participate in spring practice. You know, you'd like to have him there. But, man, that line needs developed all the way across, right? You get Dejon Parker in. He is there right now um, working. And, of course, he'll be a part of spring ball. You hope you can groom him into your next probably right tackle if Mason Richmond can make a step forward, take a step forward at left. And then I think Rusty's going to have an opportunity to be a starting guard if Logan Jones can hold on to the center position. Rusty Feth has been a center the last two years at Miami. He was a guard prior to that. He's played since his freshman year, started games since his freshman year, only played in three games in 2020 because that's how many games Miami, Ohio played in the MAC. In 2020. So lots of experience for Rusty Feth. Again, he's listed at six foot five, 305 pounds. I don't think he looks that big on tape. I think he's probably closer to like six, three, maybe 295, but I could be wrong. Regardless, though, that's plenty big to play center at Iowa. 
if Logan Jones doesn't take that step forward. Obviously, Iowa liked Logan Jones to move him from the defensive line over to offense. And so ideally, I think what you want here is you do want Logan Jones to grab a hold of that center position this spring to where you're comfortable heading into the summer, heading into fall camp. You're comfortable with what you have at center. And then you let Rusty Feth and Connor Colby and whoever else you have lined up to potentially take snaps at guard. Jennings Dunker, Tyler Ellsbury, those are more guys that are going to Bo Stevens. Uh, they're dealing with some attrition there, and there's always a potential for more attrition after spring ball when that next portal window opens. Those guys will all have chances to latch on and earn starting roles, but I think Feth is a guy who I wouldn't necessarily bank on him being plug-and-play just because we're talking certainly a boost in uh, competition going from Miami to Iowa. And he was a second team all conference player. So I am excited about Rusty Fett. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not just going to assume that he is an automatic starter from day one. I think he's got an opportunity to be that, but he is more versatile than probably anybody else Iowa has on the interior. Like I don't know of anybody else that they're comfortable right now playing at either guard or center, maybe a Michael Mislinski, but I'm not aware of that flexibility anywhere else. So it'll be nice to have Rusty Fett, a guy who can play, left guard, right guard, or even center, and has proven to be able to do so effectively. I did look back at their season and looked at some tape before jumping on here. They played actually three uh, major conference teams. Cincinnati, of course, is joining the Big 12. Kentucky was on their schedule. They actually beat Northwestern in Evanston. Northwestern was not very good this year, as you and I both know. They ran the ball really effectively, Miami did, against Northwestern. Ran the ball semi-effectively against Kentucky, and they were not able to run the ball well against uh, Cincinnati. Now, of course, Rusty's just one part of that run game. But Miami's had a pretty good offense since Rusty Feth's been there and a pretty good run game. Brett Gabbert's basically been the quarterback Rusty Feth's entire career there, I believe. So he's had stability there. That obviously helps. It helps when Iowa now they have, I think, some stability at QB. So, I mean, pieces right now are taking shape. I mean, again, Dejon Parker, Rusty Feth, you had Seth Anderson at wide receiver, Cade McNamara at quarterback, you had depth at tight end with Eric All, you do lose Sam Laporta, cannot forget that. I think they're going to add a couple more guys in the spring. That's what I've been told. They're likely to add at least one or two more guys in the spring. There will be more attrition because I think they're out of scholarships. I was told by a good source that Nick Jackson's visit this week, and he's the transfer linebacker from Virginia, who, by the way, has offers from some major, major programs. Auburn is in on him. Oklahoma is in on him. He's had some major LSU wanted uh, Nick Jackson. I was told that it sounds like it's down to Iowa and Oklahoma. All right. So we're going to probably hear from Nick Jackson this coming week. Uh, and if Iowa can land him, then you feel pretty good at linebacker, even though you lost three starters there. Because of what Phil Parker does, because of what Seth Wallace does traditionally with Jay Higgins back, and they've got pieces there to work with. And then I think you add, it sounds like maybe a wide receiver is still on the table for the post-spring portal window opening, and maybe a DB. They've been in on some, and uh, I mean... Personnel-wise, I, I think they can uh, do okay despite the losses of Tesla and Rouse and guys they've missed on. You're going to have misses. Certainly, the coaching conversation is still very valid, and nothing on Brian Ferentz. Crickets, the longer we go here, the less likely it becomes that he's going anywhere. And the moment Kirk Ferentz schedules a press conference and announces that Brian Ferentz is returning, that's when we'll know. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, state the obvious, but that's the bottom line. I will be completely sold that he's back once I hear it from Kirk Ferentz in a press conference, which could come as early as this next week. Rusty Feth will get here in June. The Hawkeyes hopefully building more depth this spring along that offensive line, which will help greatly. And I want to remind you, folks, uh, I'll be here throughout the spring and the summer talking Hawkeye football, recruiting news, transfer portal news, etc., and this evening at 9 p.m., we have a special treat for you. Iowa postgame. That's Iowa men's basketball postgame with Coach Gary Close. So Iowa defeating Rutgers earlier today. The Scarlet Knights falling in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Exciting victory for the Hawks, the one they desperately needed. It'll be myself, Coach Gary Close, and former Hawkeye, 
Wade Looking Bill. He'll be joining us as well. Should be a great show, folks. Tune in live right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm on YouTube. Myself, Coach Gary Close, and Wade Looking Bill for Iowa postgame recapping Iowa's win over Rutgers following Chiefs-Bengals Sunday night, 9 p.m. right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you then.